The year 2020 will go down as one for the books, but among the lessons I have learned are centered around health. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the inequalities in the healthcare system. Not that we did not know this already, but the pandemic truly laid it all bare. We were forced to come to terms with how much we have invested or not in our health as a nation. For the first time, we were counting the number of ICU beds in the country in both private and public hospitals and discovered that we fell woefully short. We were learning about ventilators and what they do oxygen capacity. We have come face to face with the gaps that exist in our healthcare system. Gaps in funding, the fight against key diseases like HIV, maternal health, and many others that are almost entirely donor funded. The misuse of public funds in the health sector with the big scandals like the mafia scandal, the Kemsa scandal, many of which remain unresolved to date. We've started to understand some gaps in the devolution of health. And we have seen very clearly that healthcare workers, that's doctors, nurses, clinical officers, laboratory technicians, who can barely afford the very same services they provide to their patients every day. We now understand the importance of healthcare insurance and seen the big failings in our national insurer to cater for those who truly need it. We continue to allocate between 6 and 7% of our entire budget to health, a far cry from the 15% we signed up to in the Abuja Declaration. We have the universal health coverage plan, but that can only be a success when we sort out many of the issues I have already raised, including having a functioning and efficient drug supply system. And sadly, that has not been the case if the scandal at Kemsa has been anything to go by. Never has the phrase health is wealth been more apparent than it has this year. I mean, a health crisis has had serious ramifications on economics, livelihoods, jobs, and then in a cyclical manner coming right back to affect our health yet again. The inequalities were also laid bare. We saw the vulnerable, the marginalized, the urban poor, small businesses, all severely affected either directly by the virus or indirectly by its effects. The concept of the haves and the have-nots has been seen on the world stage even, with the wealthier nations able to fund vaccine development and give it to their people first. The rich nations, whose population makes up 14% of the world, booking over half of the vaccines available in the world. The lessons for me come from a conversation I had recently with Winnie Benyima, the executive director of UNAIDS, in which she reminded us of the very central role of government. She reminds us that health is a human right, not a commodity for sale. That people don't get healthy by buying it for themselves. You see, governments gave up their responsibility to produce medicines for their people and to regulate the sale of those medicines. They gave it up to the private sector. Yet when we were in crisis, it is governments that gave billions of dollars to the private companies to develop a vaccine. The U.S. government, in fact, giving $2.5 billion to Moderna to develop a vaccine that is now in use in some countries around the world. And on inequalities, Winnie Bianima drew lessons from both HIV and COVID-19 that human rights must be at the center of fighting epidemics, epidemics that thrive where inequalities reign. But overall, the biggest lesson for me is this. We have to go back and restore the role of government in delivering the right to health on access to medicines, health systems that work for all people, not just those who can pay for it. And that is my take for 2020.